The president began the meeting with the starboat captains. As you may have all surmised, the Federated has suffered its own version of Pearl Harbor. We've been hit hard, real hard, about half of our fleet has been destroyed. The remaining ships have been busy on defense until now. Now we have a breather. It's now or never. We can't afford to wait until the Klingons grow strong again or have time to make even more alliances. Nor can I have the Klingons taking pot shots at us all over the Federated. We're spread too thin, they'd eventually wear us down. However, if we can hit them hard, all at once, we might have a chance. This is not merely a gamble, it is our only option. We're going to attack the Klingon homeworld of Kazakhstan. A wave of astonishment, then realization, swept the room. Someone shouted out what they all knew. Why an attack on the Klingon homeworld will attract every Klingon ship from light years around. Kazakhstan is 59 days away at WEF 7, the highest safe extended cruising speed, noted the president, through mostly unmapped Klingon space. This will be the final stand of the Federated. I am appointing James T. Quirk as our war feat commander. I am coming along only for political decisions, for I am much too feeble to command a feat effectively anymore. As for what's out there, we have little new intelligence on the Klingon homeworld. So far, no Klingon prisoner of war has talked. They have all managed to kill themselves one way or the other. I am getting the feeling that they may be concealing some terrible and horrible secret. But that is also part of what we must find out. Another thing, the Feet Feet will be carrying the newly developed PKMs, Planet Killer Missiles, to be launched only on my command. One last thing, we are short on Trilithium Crystals. Each ship will have only three. One for the trip there, one to use during the battle, and if lucky, one to get home with. Now this is all we now know about the Klingon social structure. There are three strata. The lowest is that of the common Klingon. They are called third Klingon. We have never met one even though they make up over 95% of the Klingon race. The second Klingons, sometimes called New Klingons or Chuthangan, are the Klingons we know and hate. They are genetically engineered battle-class Klingons. They only serve aboard ships and on Klingon starbabes. They are the Klingons that we usually run into. They have been specifically bred for battle, and their physical strength is much superior to other classes of Klingons. Their skulls have thicker, bonier ridges for added protection. Finally, there are just a handful of first Klingons. They are executive and command level Klingons. They hold the real power. The Klingon Emperor is such. That's it. Get your ships ready to leave within 36 hours. When Quirk and Spook received the news of Scuddy's promotion to feed engineering admiral, they rushed over to congratulate him. Scuddy had a smile on his face and was beaming proudly as he pointed to two console screens each showing a familiar starboat. Scuddy, said Quirky, you've repaired the unrepairable Enterprise and the Insepid in only a few hours? Yes, Captain, said Scuddy. See? The first console screen showed a front view of the Enterprise with all system indicators showing ready. On the second console was a rear view of the Insepid, again with all its system status indicators showing ready. And on each console screen, the name of the ship was clearly visible on the ship's hull. Quirk frowned, then broke into a smile. They're the same ship, Scuddy. You joined the undamaged dish section of the Enterprise to the still-functioning weft drive section of the Insepid. Then you used two different cameras to show the same ship on two different screens from two different angles. And the President bought it? He promoted me to Admiral, answered Scuddy, and put me in charge of both ships, saying that those vessels constitute my feet. I see, said Jim. Jim Quirk had dinner and then went to his quarters to meet the first of many appointments. It was to be a long night of preparation for feet departure. The president arrived precisely on time and poured himself a cup of coffee. Jim did the same and waited for the president to speak. Jim, I hope you understand that we must act now, otherwise the enemy will build up against us and gradually overwhelm us. We have reports that the Klingons are making unusual alliances, even with their enemies in order to put an end to the Federated once and for all. It's going to be close, Quirk. We may all arrive about the same time. Even a day could make a difference. So, the feet must leave tomorrow, whatever its state of readiness. Anyway, it's a long journey to the home world of the Klingon Empire, so we can plan along the way. This will give the cadets a chance to get used to their vessels. Also, some ships will run under computer control, 
As of now I am turning control of this mission over to you as Feet Commander. However, I will still make political decisions and will act as Commander of Starfeet itself for the duration of the mission. Thank you, Mr. President. I will pull out every stop. Let's go in with all we have. Do or die. Do we have any more ships? I need more options. What about the new Ultra Wefts? Yes, we have three Ultra Weft ships just out of manufacturing. They took five years to build and cost a small fortune. They are the first usable prototypes of the Ultra Weft class battleships. They can effectively run at Weft 18. This is the wave of the future, Jim, if we survive the present. Using Ultra Weft, ships can arrive at any trouble spot in the galaxy within a day or two. They can also travel to other galaxies within a matter of months. But, as I say, they are very expensive and complex. They generate four overlapping transweft fields out in front of the ship's path, which have a cumulative effect. Thus, the Weft 18 capability. I need them all. What are their names? The Excelsius, the Andromeda, and the Magellan. You can have only two of them. I have to hold back the Magellan to handle any problems within the Federated while we are away. Both ships need captains. You may appoint them. Also, I have donated my presidential ship, now renamed Last Frontier, to the feet. It needs a captain too. Jim thought for a moment. An ultra weft ship can go on ahead and raid the Klingon Trilithium stations. It can be in and out before the Klingons can mobilize against it. Good idea, Jim. That's our weakest point, our shortage of trilithium crystals. The other Ultra Weft ship can assist in the battle's hotspots or distress calls. This war will be fought by hundreds of ships spread light years apart. It will be like a giant four-dimensional chess game, the Ultra Wefts being able to pop up, so to speak, in any quadrangle at any time. Yes, Jim, it's your game, and we'll need lots of maneuvering room. I would spread out the feet and let them size up situations as they go, although coordinated under the general strategy of the chess master. Feet actions are few and far between in federated history. You'll have to wing it somewhat, Jim. There are no set patterns. There are hundreds of openings and counter moves, dozens of factors to be weighed at every turn. It's as much instinct and intuition as it is logical planning. They're interrelated. Intuition sets up logic and vice versa, as you know. Mr. President, I'm putting you in command of the last frontier. At my age? At your age. I'm just joking, Jim. Actually, I was hoping you'd do that. And thank you for rescinding the Starboat Captain's retirement rule. One is only as old or as young as he feels. You're 103 years young. Good luck, Jim. I believe your next appointment has arrived. See you in space, young man. Lieutenant Commander Chekhov reporting, sir. Sit down, Chekhov. I have good news and bad news for you. What's the good news? I'm promoting you to the rank of full commander and assigning you as captain of a new ultra-weft ship, the Excelsius. She's yours if you want her. She's fresh out of manufacturing. She's the fastest ship in the galaxy, Klingon ships included. I'll take her, sir. Boy, will I take her. What's the bad news? Your ship will be staffed by raw cadet marines and your mission is to raid Klingon trilithium mining stations and steal their crystals. We will need more crystals for the battle and for the voyage home. No problem, answered Chekhov. I come from a long line of Russian war heroes. I know you do, Chekhov. That's why I'm counting on you. Your ship will be here in the morning. Thank you. Jim's calendar was full and many assignments were given to the various captains. Jim talked to each one, especially the ones he hadn't met, to learn what kind of men and women they were, how they would react and hold up in battle. Jim talked to the commanders and first overseers of the Proxima, the Valiant, the Hood, the Hear You, the Definite, and the Polaris, all newly manned ships. Quirk met next with military intelligence. Please come in. What's the latest on the Klingon war force? It will consist mainly of the following. 50 D7 Class 7 9th Cruisers, the infamous symbol of tyranny. 15 D7 G Class 7 9 Cruisers, the Katala, Truthbringer. 15 D7 M Class 7 9 Cruisers, the Katinga, Bringer of Destruction. 10 L84 Class 30 Battleships, the Comaval, Ever Victorious. The L84S are the most powerful battleships they have. What are their weapons? asked Quirk. Eight CD-8 disruptors, four CD-13 disruptors, six CD-6 torpedo banks. Thank you. Scuddy was up next. Mr. Scud, 
I understand you were a part of the team that designed the Ultra WEF class vessels. Indeed, Captain. Another three months of testing and they'll be ready to go. Scuddy, we're going to test them in combat. That's why I need you to be Captain and Chief Engineer of the Andromeda. She's arriving here tomorrow under computer control. If she gets here, we're thereby deeming her ready for the next testing phase. War. I've assigned Chekhov to the other Ultra Weft. The Excelsius. I'll do it, replied Scuddy. And I'll look after Chekhov, too. We're manning your ship with cadets from the senior class. I want you to attend to the hot spots in the battles. An Ultra Weft has the firepower of three dead knots, as you know. Hold that ship together, Scuddy. She's bound to have a few loose nuts and bolts. Sounds interesting. They're the first of the Juggernaut class. I like that name, Juggernaut, Scuddy. I'd always wondered what could be the name for a ship more dreadful than a dead knot. Scene script, Dr. Macboy came in next. Boons, how did you get on my calendar? I'm not. You're on my calendar, Jim. This is a house called by your physician. It's nearly 3 a.m. Are you going to burn yourself out on the first day? Of course, Boons. The adrenaline is flowing and the battle plans are taking shape. I'm doing some of my best thinking now. I believe you are. How does it all look? It's about even as it stands right now, Boons. However, the Klingons are forming alliances. We must strike hard and strike fast. Even at that, it's going to be tough. We're bringing repair ships, hospital ships, transports, tugs, scouts, the works. Just about anything and everything that can move at feet weft speed. If we have to, we'll separate each ship in two, using the auxiliary control room to direct the engineering hull in independent action, now that many ships have a weft drive on each hull. Great. Now get some sleep, Jim. You look rather tired. Thanks, Mother Boons. I just have one more appointment. Jim's last appointment walked in the door. Hello, Miss Rind, said Jim, no longer looking tired. 